While the headlines of this 106th Giro might be around the three time trials and a certain roglic Avenapol showdown, this year's route has plenty of opportunities for motivated sprinters who can negotiate a bit of lumpy terrain. The organisers have denoted eight of the 21 stages as low difficulty, and while that may be a relative term compared to the gargantuan high mountain tests, we've got five riders coming up who we think will deliver the goods in the bunch finishes. Before we start, don't forget that you can catch every single kilometre of this year's Giro d'Italia live and on demand in all territories over on GCM+. We'll also have pre- and post-race analysis from the breakaway team, as well as highlights to suit even the most time-crunched of cycling fans. Without further ado, on to the sprinters. After a drawn-out transfer saga last winter, Mark Cavendish approaches the Giro still seeking a first win for his new team, Astana Kazakhstan. It's not through want of trying though, he's amassed 31 days of racing in 2023, the highlight of which being a third place finish at the Sprinters Classic Skeldepris. We'll be interested to see how this race plots within his ultimate goal of a 35th stage win at the Tour de France in July. That big target on the horizon might see him exit the Giro before it reaches Rome in order to get a head start on his tour preparations, but we wouldn't be surprised if he leaves Italy with at least one win under his belt. With the team lineup seemingly geared towards opportunities in the mountain stages, we'll have to wait and see just how much team support is allocated to Cav on the flatter days. If Remy Cavagna is the TGV of Clermont Ferrand, then that makes Mass Pedersen the ATV of. Toulouse? T Toulouse? T uh, okay, the nickname needs some work, but hear us out. With Giulio Ciccone sadly forced to withdraw due to COVID 19, Trek Segafredo might put a lot more of their eggs in Mass Pedersen's basket. And the 2019 world champion will have at least half a dozen circles drawn in his roadbook highlighting stages that suit him, particularly the long hilly transitional days like stages 11 and 14, where we could see the Dane and his teammates fighting to bring back an eager breakaway. As we saw from last year's Vuelta, Pedersen excels when the going gets tough. All three of his stage wins came in the latter half of that tour. And if he does grab himself a stage win, he'll complete the full set of Grand Tour victories alongside his achievements at the Tour de France and the Vuelta Espana. We could even see him in the Malia Rosa, if the opening three stages go particularly well for him. Like any great artist, Michael Matthews has evolved throughout his career. From a plucky young sprinter in his early years at Orica Greenedge, to more of an all-round opportunist in his 30s. Capable of performing in the Spring Classics and like we saw at last year's Tour de France, displaying guile and guts in equal measure to take a memorable victory from the breakaway on stage 14. He might not be able to outgun the fastest riders on the flatter days anymore, but in reality there aren't that many stages in this race that are truly flat, and his physiology will suit the numerous punchy climbs and draggy final kilometres that characterise this 106th edition. He's also more than capable of lasting all 21 stages, although finishing the Giro is something he's yet to achieve in his career, with crashes and Covid among the reasons for three DNFs at this race. Based on pure speed alone, Caden Groves could be the man to beat in the big bunch finishes. Unlike some other sprinters on this list, the Giro will be the young Australian's main objective for the early part of the season, and Alper Sinderkernick look likely to bring a team designed to support his ambitions, including veteran leadout man Ramon Sinkeldam, who moves over to the Dutch outfit after many successful years in Arno de Mar's leadout train at Group Armour FTJ. This will only be his second Grand Tour, but he's already opened his account in the three-week stage races, having got the better of the likes of Tim Malia and Mass Pedersen on stage 11 of last year's Welter. He's continued the momentum this season with two stage wins at the Volta Catalunya and an imperious performance at the Volta Limburg Classic. If the stars align, it could be a fruitful Giro for Groves. Fernando Gaviria has good memories of the Giro. He took an incredible four stage wins and the points classification at the 2017 edition, which was also the first Grand Tour of his career. While some may argue that he's failed to live up to the potential he showed in his early days at Quickstep, 
the Giro could offer somewhat of a fresh start for Gaviria after moving on from some troubled years at UAE Team Emirates over to Movistar for 2023. It took him just four days to open his account for the Spanish outfit at the Vuelta San Juan, and he seems to be hitting form at exactly the right time, closing out the Tour de Romandy with a brilliant stage win. Movistar's GC ambitions will be focused on the Tour de France this year, which means Gaviria should get plenty of team protection at the Giro to give him the best possible chance at stage success, and who knows, maybe even a shot at the Ciclamino points jersey too. There's our list of sprint favourites, but is there anyone you think we've missed? Let us know in the comments section down below and drop us a like if you enjoyed the video. All that's left to do is wait for the action to unfold from Saturday the 6th of May and you can watch it all on GCN+.